episode 38. Let's do this. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation, to episode 38 of the Business of Architecture show. To start off today, I just want to give a shout out to my friends Sparrow Builders and Carrie Westerbeck, who left ratings for the show on iTunes. So a big shout out to you guys. Carrie, known known Carrie for a while. Thanks a lot for your, your rating that you left. Also, Sparrow Builders. I looked online and tried to find your name. Wasn't able to, but I thought that was pretty cool that even a contractor is leaving reviews for Business of Architecture. So come on, architects. you got to step up to the plate. Head on over, please, to the Business of Architecture on iTunes. Leave me your name. Leave me your thoughts on the show, and I will read those comments and incorporate them into future episodes. So first of all, thank you, everyone, for your support. Even if you haven't had the chance to leave a review on iTunes yet, I appreciate everyone that's done that and those of you who just tune in every single week to support the Business of Architecture show. Now, I just wanted to flip over really quick and mention some of the people in the past, actually all the people who have left a review for iTunes, just to give them the thanks they deserve. And so I'm going to start off by thanking Five Cat Studio, my good friend Mark LePage over at Entrepreneur Architect, an excellent show that if you're listening to this show, you should definitely have that one queued up in the podcast. Also, I have a review here from Neil Pan, Napa Architect. So thank you, Neil, from the Arches Speak podcast, another excellent podcast. In addition, I have, um, I have a, a review here by Matthew Gulo. And Matthew, I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. I know we've corresponded through email, but thank you so much for the review you left on iTunes. Uh, Sarah left a review on April 11th of this year. So appreciate that. Adam Mayberry, my good friend. I haven't heard from you in a while, Adam. Hope all is well. Want to thank you here on the air for leaving a review on iTunes, as well as Evan Troxel, um, also from the Archer Speak podcast. I have Lottie on here. Lottie, it is good to see that you left a review here. Thank you so much. John, appreciate your review. John's the next review on here. And I really appreciate that. Also, my buddy Jeff Mendelson left a review here. Uh, Jeff is not an architect, but he's a buddy of mine that also runs a podcast show. And then last but definitely not least, Jeff Eccles, my good friend at Renovati on Twitter. Thank you for leaving your thoughts on the business of architecture. Now, for the next two episodes, you'll be hearing from Aurora Minigelo. She's the marketing manager of Novedge. They're an online software store exclusively for design professionals. Now, this isn't a paid endorsement. Uh, she didn't course me to bring her here on the show, but I'm happy to say if you're shopping for new software in the architecture niche, go ahead, check out Novedge, Novedge.com. Now, I reached out to Aurora because she's been doing some great things through social media and blogging, and I wanted to bring her on the show to share her knowledge with us and experience about how is we as architects can implement and learn from what she's learned about spreading the message of Novej. So without further ado, here's the show. Hey, welcome back, Agile Architects, to the Business of Architecture show. Today we have the awesome opportunity to have Aurora Minigello with us. So hey there, Aurora. Hi, how are you, everybody? Hi, Enoch. <laughs> yeah, good to have you on. So Aurora is the, she's the marketing manager for Novej who's the leading online reseller of software for design professionals. So in other words, if you want to get your um, any design software, whether it's CAD, Rhino, Revit, Novedge has it on their online store. Is that a good summary of, of what your company does, Aurora? Perfect, yes. Awesome. Well, I reached out to Aurora as marketing manager because she has – I've just noticed online in the online space that what she's doing seems to be effective, and I really like the way she's reaching out to promote the Novedge brand. And since she interfaces with a lot of architects and designers, I thought what an excellent opportunity to get her on the show and talk about her perspective, both in dealing with architects and also an outside perspective of, of marketing for architects. Thank you, Enoch. Thank you for having me here. Well, it's a pleasure. And we, had a, we did have a, a Google Hangout a little while ago that went really well on social media for architects. So I thought I would... Um, I, I thought I had to get you back, Aurora. I thought that I had to bring you on, um, put you in the hot Fair seat. Enough. There you go. 
<laughs> yeah, it was great to have you um, on board of the Google Hangout. You know, I learned. I learn all the time talking to other marketing professionals. And so did I, you know, and anyone who wants to go look at that, they can find it on Noveg's blog. And if you just do a Google search, I think, for Noveg blog, you can find that. There's some other good marketing resources on there. But in that particular conversation, we talked about social media for architects. Yes. Right? Okay. Well, Aurora, let's, let's step back a little bit. We know that right now you're the marketing manager at Noveg. I want to go back in time a little bit and talk about, you know, your process of learning about marketing and some of the things you learned and then tell us, you know, what you think could apply to what architects do in terms of promoting their work and their practices. Sure. So I have an, uh, quite an orthodox um, start in marketing. Um, my background is in filmmaking and photography. And so I learned uh, marketing because I wanted to promote my art and what I was doing. Um, I made a documentary film and a short documentary film. And that was um, the first time I was exposed to marketing in a way that resonated with me. Um, Kyle McCarthy um, volunteered with us. It was like a volunteer project. And he had experienced marketing to um, Generation Y online. Um, Facebook, you know, Facebook pages had just started recently and Twitter was very new. And uh, I had never really thought of marketing. For me, marketing was one of those words, you know, like sort of with business, like the money people, you know, that kind of stuff. And then uh, when Kyle came on board our, our movie, like what he really exposed me to is marketing as a form of building community and connecting with people that think like you and exposing people to ideas that resonate with them. And it was amazing. It was an amazing experience for me. Can I pause and you right this, there, Aurora? Yeah. Just because you said something very interesting, and I want to stop and, and get into that. You said that as an artist, you had maybe some prejudices against marketing, or you had this per perception of what marketing was. Yeah, let me say more. I went to art school, you know, so... Um... <laughs> One of the, in, in my art school, money was like the bad word, right? Like you, you never talked about making money or promoting your work or anything like that. We talked a little bit about promoting your work, but as an artist, right? So never with like the intent of selling. And, um, and so marketing to me was like a way to um, manipulate people. That's what, that's what sounded to me. Um, and until I actually started doing it and, and I was exposed to particularly the writing of Seth Godin, who's like one of the bloggers I read every day religiously, um, you know, it shifted then because then marketing became, you never lie in marketing. Marketing is not about lying and it's not about manipulating people into doing anything, you know, so you can leave that idea out the door right now um, because one of the fundamental, um, for me, like principles of marketing and being a marketer is that you don't lie. You connect with people and you share ideas and you build community just like a normal human being, you know, and that's, that's what I do um, in my job. That's, and that's what I started to do as a marketer. Why do you think artists, and I know architects sort of have a similar bias a lot of times, are sort of, I guess, this negative perception of marketing and, and business in general. Do you have any idea where that sort of comes from or your personal opinion? That's a million dollar question, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot of things. Um, I think it's, you know, it's long history. It's sort of one of those perpetuating myths. But I'll tell you something. Not a lot of people know this, but Leonardo da Vinci, so I'm Italian, so I'll bring up Leonardo da Vinci. You know, he was making money designing weapons. So here's the thing. You can either make money with another job doing something that you might not even find ethical, or you can make money doing your art and doing something good. Um, so that is the big thing for me that shifted as an artist that I was like, I'm going to learn, you know, marketing and, and sales and business because I was like, I can decide to spend my time having another job that I don't like so that I can go back home and make my art or I can decide to, you know, learn how to make money with what I love to do that actually might have an impact in the world. Um, so that's how it shifted for me. I, you know, you can look at hundreds of years of, of, of history for why we have this bad idea about art. I don't know. Okay. Well, then we, let's go back to the documentary. So I appreciate the answer. It's a very interesting rabbit hole, so to speak, about the whole <laughs> conflict between art versus, versus money and, and promotion. So let's take it back. I interrupted your story. Pick it up and tell us about how you started to see the other side of marketing and see sure. it as a benefit. 
So at the same time that I was making my movie, I had uh, my business as a wedding photographer. And I also had a business partnership um, with other wedding professionals. And we were um, doing as a group weddings, uh, green weddings. Um, I really um, got more and more into marketing and branding that way. And I started to geek out. Like I was reading everything and learning so much. And it was like very unconscious on my part and at a certain point I noticed that I would go to meetings with my business partners and be like I read this book and how about you know and and everybody was like oh yeah okay you know they were not as quite enthusiastic and it dawned on me that I had a real passion for this and it was a lot of like storytelling and a lot of creativity and a lot of what I like to do in art and this could be like my art form or what I do and so I switched careers I switched careers and and I went to work with Novetch that works with artists and is a great match for me and uh, it was it was very seamless I think from the outside it seemed a big shift but from the inside it was years in the making of just me finding another outlet for what I was doing already fascinating tell me one of the two or three big ahas you had when you took you know when you started learning about marketing okay um <clears throat> So the one thing is uh, so much that is about um, communication. I really was drawn to art and, and film and photography because it's about communicating with other people and sort of shifting the way they look at the world. And so I think this has a lot to do with what you market. So I have a rule for myself that I will not market things that I feel like are evil, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or like that I feel like might make the world a worse place. Um, so I stick with marketing things or working for companies that I feel like are, are contributing to the world in the right direction. Um, and that's uh, one big advice for you, <laughs> you know, to always stick with that. And so um, I really saw marketing as communication. And so um, expressing ideas and, and, and understanding what people need and what people want and what people want to talk about and what I'm interested in talking about and having fun. So that was a big aha moment. Okay, so, other, um, so let, me, let me pause you on that one. Sure. So on communication, can you give me some examples of what you mean to understand it more, better? Yeah, um, I have to, yeah, I have to think how to maybe be more concise on this. Um, well, I think, you know, you, you, you just described what Novage does, you know, and that's a form of communication. Like, how do I say what Novage does in like a sentence or two? That's, that's storytelling, that's communication. Um, what kind of image we use to represent a company? Um, what kind of image you use to represent yourself? You know, um, that is all part of marketing. Marketing is is everything you do that that is um, that communicates to the person in front of you what you do and uh, and what kind of person you are, what kind of company you have. Okay, so is it fair to say then that the marketing communications that happen need to represent the values and the goals and what you offer as a as a person i mean is that where the communication comes into it yeah as a person as a company if you have a small business and people mostly interface with you then it's extremely important you know from what you wear to um to how you talk and you know whether you meet at your office or at their office and all of that is marketing okay so that's number one the big aha was communication yes the second one is that it's an ever-changing uh, landscape and it's an ever-changing profession. Um, I like that. I like challenges. <laughs> I like the fact that, you know, in a year I will be probably doing something slightly different and in 10 years I'll probably do something completely different in marketing. So for me that was very appealing. Okay. And let's talk about goal setting, Aurora. What would you... You know, let, so at the very beginning, when someone decides they want to start doing some promotion and they want to start doing some marketing, how would you say that they get started with that process? Yeah. So having experience as a business owner doing my own marketing, I have to say, um, you know, it can be overwhelming. And the biggest, um, the biggest hurdles uh, that people always bump against are time and money. It's good to realize that everybody has this problem of time and money, even big companies. So, you know, you can relax right there. <laughs> we all bump against it. Um, but the trick here is to really be able to focus on what's most important and what will help you the most in your business. So I like to, play, to plan backwards. Um, so you want to sort of say, like, have 
a one year plan, right? It all depends on your business, but let's say one year. You want to figure out how much money you want to make, how many clients you need to make that money, how many clients or what type of clients you would need to make that money. The more experience you have, the more you're able to have uh, an accurate plan. If you're just starting, then ask around and try something, right? Write something down so you have something to go by. Then once you figure out how much money you want and, and from how many clients and what type, then you need to figure out where those people are or how you're going to reach them and how long is the sales cycle. So, um, you know, for example, for me, like I was in wedding photography, so my sales cycle was like it would take a couple of months sometimes for people from when they met me to book me and they would book people a year ahead to six months ahead. So I would plan with that in mind, right? I want to book 2010, then what am I doing in 2009? So it all depends on those variables. Um, once you have those down, you plan your marketing based on those goals. Okay, so so say for instance, we can just use myself as an example. Sure. I have, I would say I have probably a sales cycle that's anywhere from a year to 18 months. So I would just figure out, and I know how much my clients would be worth. I know how much money I want to make. So I know how many clients. So I work backwards from there. So what you're saying is that if I know my sales cycles is a year to 18 months, basically, the plan I start implementing today, I'll start to see results in about a year. Yes, a year to 18 months. Yeah. So now you have to keep reviewing you know, what you're doing and your goals because things shift, right? Especially when you have a long uh, sales cycle, but you kind of want to keep those in mind all the time. Post them on the wall, <laughs> post them on your computer, right? Keep focused on that. So okay, so let's say you have a year, um, 18 month cycle. Then you need to figure out how people um, hear from you and how people book you. If you don't know at all, it's very easy to just have a, a spread, an Excel spreadsheet or a spreadsheet and you sort of write um, when they first contacted you and how they found you. Was it word of mouth? If it was word of mouth from who? Is it your friends? Is it other people you work with? Is it, you know, their friends that found you online? You know, you want to be very specific. As you keep track of this, you're going to start to see trends in your business. So you're going to, for example, you might see that to book 10 clients, you talk to 120 people or to book 10 clients, 120 people called you and you talk to 50. So you have to meet with 50 people to book 10 clients. You know, you start having this statistics. So it gives you an idea of how much you have to do to get those numbers. You know, another conversation, the better you get at the cycle, the, the smaller the numbers, maybe you need only, you know, to meet with 30 people to, be, to book 10, that's other things. But essentially you want to have an idea of what kind of work you need. Then based on that, you decide what kind of marketing you do. So now, mm, I don't know if you have another question. I should just continue. <laughs> no, we can we can just continue. So okay. I, I can I can bring it back to my situation. You know, yes. one of the client groups that I work with are facility managers at hospitals. Mm. Right. So what I would do in that case is I would I would have to compile a database or a list of all the the facility managers at, at different hospitals. And I would, like you said, I already know my, I know my client value and I know my, my sales cycle. So then take it from there, I guess. Yes. And so you want to understand like, um, you know, yes. So let's say, you know, that you find that you book one of these jobs every five that you talk to. Okay. So then your target is going to be to have five um, and you want 10 of them, as I said, so your, your goal is 50. Okay, so now you need to figure out where do they find out about you, okay? Um, again, with experience and like tweaking, you're going to find more and more and keeping track. So that's where now your strategy for marketing starts. That's where you decide where to put your marketing time and dollars. And even if it's free, meaning you're doing yourself, it's never free, it's your time, right? So we want to figure out the most effective ways to get your clients. There might be 10 ways you want to pick the two or three that are most eff effective. So um, let's, ta let's talk about um, a few different strategies. Um, I'll start with the ones that are not online and I land online so that we can talk more about online. Okay, so one strategy is to, this is something you should do all the time if it's your own business, everybody you know should know what you do, okay? Like that doesn't mean spamming your friends, <laughs> but it means like 
you just let everybody that knows you know that you're an architect and you work with hospitals and and facilities and every once in a while maybe chat about you know uh, what you're what you're looking for you never know who's out there who knows somebody and can introduce you to somebody there is um press so if you already have some work or if in any way you can get press and that includes blogs um that is one strategy you can use there is public speaking if you um, are knowledgeable in a topic that your clients are in or prospective clients are inter interested to, um, you can find ways to speak publicly, to speak at meetings, um, things like that. There's networking, in-person networking. That is um, with people that have the same job as you have, who are not your competition, and I will tell you in a second why, <laughs> Or with people that are complementary businesses. So, um, you know, can you, in your case, who would be a complementary business for you? Well, let's see. It would be um, potentially suppliers that deal with the same type of people. It could be people okay. that sell things to facility managers. Um, the question. Okay. The question Sorry. was complementary businesses, or which one? Uh, sure. Yeah those exactly so you might want to make a list of people that sort of like um talk to the same clients and you know talk in a similar type of conversation but it can even be like i don't know i you know i i don't know your specific um so well but it could be maybe an insurance person you know i don't know if they talk about insurance and then they might give you um they might give referrals so you want to make uh connections with people that can refer you and that you can refer Okay, so that's very powerful. Yeah, and, and just just to break in there, so for instance, in my situation, it might be it might be health consultants, it might be nursing consultants, because there are nursing consultants out there that go into hospitals and help them determine how to change the flow to minimize infections and things like that. You know, and these mm -hmm. would be people that they would be in the conversations of, hey, we needed we need an architect to help us do this work, and so that would be a good yes, a and good you want. Person. So, you know, and here's where you have to use a little bit of your, your gut feeling. Um, you need to let them know that you want a referral, but you don't want to be pushy. So you don't want to meet them. Hi, I'm, you know, can I want a referral? Can you refer me to a client? No, obviously not. But you also don't want to meet these people and not mention that you're out there looking for a client. Mm -hmm. And that's where marketing communication is very important. You have to tell them concisely in a way that they'll remember you when that conversation comes up with a client. So um, that's a very powerful way. Um, networking with the same professionals and not looking at them at com a competition. I want to go back to that for a second. Um, this is something I've learned um, from the caterer I worked with um, a lot in weddings, and she was booked so much, right? And and we were all like, how do you get so booked? You know, like who do you meet with? And she said, I meet with other caterers. And we're like, what? Like, and she said, well. If they have more jobs and they cannot handle them, then they pass them to me. If they don't and I'm competing with them and somebody comes right to a tasting and says, I'm looking at these three people and I know who they are, the prospective clients feels like, wow, she knows her stuff. She knows all the other caterers in town, right? So you really want to like make friends and be able to exchange business and give referrals and all that with people that work with you. And the last thing is that usually the problem is that, um, especially for residential architects actually, so for smaller jobs, the problem is when you have clients that don't appreciate what you do, or they don't understand. So to have more and more of a community of people that are out giving the same message that what you do is valuable, that goes to your advantage as a profession. So you really want to elevate always the professional and look at people in a collaborative way that you can put that message out instead of looking at them as competition. Okay. Talk to me more about collaboration and how that can be helpful in marketing. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, this is a lesson I had to learn in life, which is it's always about other people. Everything you do is about other people. So as a business owner, you know, you want to collaborate with your client and you want to understand that um, you need to share the same ideas, you have to share the same goals, you have to share the same vision, so you're collaborating with your client. As a marketer, you want to collaborate with other marketers in learning. 
So there's no such thing, as I said before, as learning by yourself. I have a marketing group. You know, I meet with two other marketers, three other marketers. I have a collection of marketers. And every once in a while, we meet and we exchange ideas. And what did you learn? And any ideas about this, you know? And, and I'm learning all the time. And they're learning from me. And even online, it's a big learning community. So there's that type of collaboration. Um, there's collaboration with um, other businesses, like we mentioned in referrals, like that's the type of collaboration. I am all about collaboration and I'm all about other people. Somebody has already figured out what you need to know. You need to go out there, make friends, get a mentor, be a mentor. If you've ever taught anything, you know you learn more by teaching. <laughs> Sometimes being a student. Um, so collaboration is the name of the game. Um, online, offline, everywhere. Excellent. So we have our we have our marketing plan. We've worked backwards. We have this collaboration mindset where we're about helping out other people. And we didn't mention online, which is which is the other marketing strategy. Yeah, we haven't even gone to online. Well, before <laughs> we jump over there to online, I want to I want to know if there's anything else we can sort of talk about collaboration. If there's any other examples or maybe ways that you think that architects can leverage this win win. I mean, let's just try to brainstorm a scenario because um, maybe there's someone out there listening that can apply some of these concepts. So let's say we have an architect that does say residential work and they're they're to the point where they're ready to get out in front of people and they want to start collaborating with people. Uh, do you have any suggestions for maybe going I on with I can think of some ideas that I've seen. Uh, one, um, Jeff Stafford has um, a community on Google Plus and um, I think you're part of it as well, right? And it's a Google Plus community for architects to share ideas and collaborate with each other. It's a great community and I really invite everybody to join um, who's watching this and who's an architect. Um, so that's a great way that you can implement right away. Um, there are also networking groups, and if you don't have one in your city, I highly recommend starting one. Um, in San Francisco, there's something called BNI, uh, Business Networking International, that's really big, and I think they have chapters all over. Um, but there's other, you know, there's others, and as I said, and you can even like, you know, if you're a woman architect, there might be groups for women or anything like that. Um, those are great ways where you can really learn from each other and, and collaborate on all sorts of projects. Um, the AIA uh, in San Francisco has a really good program. I haven't attended one yet, but I see it online all the time and I want to go. <laughs> it's called um, SF Home Tours. And so basically, I think it's once a month on a weekend, three um, architects keep their, um, basically go to a residence they built or a building they built and everybody can go get a tour and meet the architect. To me, that's genius. I mean, if you're, you know, if you want to hire an architect, what better chance to like go see what they built and talk to them, right? So Absolutely. Um, if, if your AIA chapter doesn't have this, you know, you can probably organize it and you can ask one of your previous clients if they'll open the house, you know, and so on. Um, this could be also good collaboration for, let's say, um, a real estate agent or a contract or anything like that. You know, you can think about more ingenious ways to make this work um, in your chapter. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I do a lot of collaborations online. Um, so we can talk about this later if you want and just um, talk about this specifically. But online, it's a mirror of real life. And so you can kind of be a, you know, a, a person, a genuine person, a generous person and have collaborations online like we're doing right now, <laughs> you know. Um. Absolutely. Let's, let's jump, like we said, let's jump into the online afterwards. But finish this up here, Aurora. Tell me about a business book or marketing book that's been influential, maybe a Seth Godin book that you found was really groundbreaking for you. So, yeah, my favorite Seth Godin book is, and I think he might have changed the title. So look it up and see if there's another title now, but it's called all marketers are liars <laughs> and it's actually about not lying in marketing um, and it's about not trying to convince people and manipulate people but it's really about connecting on a shared view of the world and realizing who is your client who is not your client and who you should be talking to and not you know resisting bumping bits like not effective at all okay excellent so that's um and there's also another book of his that uh, it's called lynchpin and this is useful even if you work um, for a company and it has a manifesto in the middle like that I love that has a bunch of tips, you know, in the way um, Seth Godin does. And, and I highly recommend I have that on my wall at home, actually, because I really love it. 
Awesome, awesome. Those Both of those books are excellent. I haven't personally read them, but they're on my list. All Marketers Are Liars by Seth Godin, Lynchpin by Seth Godin. And I just want to say for those of you who consume this podcast in audio format, if you'd like to get one of these books free through audible.com, just go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free. That will redirect you to a free trial, which will get you a free audiobook download, which um, if you're, like I said, if you already listen to podcasts, it might be a good fit for you to consume material. So any, any, any closing thoughts, Aurora, on the, the marketing plan and goals? Yes. Um, get outside perspective. Have a group of trusted people, whether in your profession or not in your profession, and ask them for feedback. What do you think is different about me? What do you think I'm doing right? What do you think I could do better? Do you have any idea whatsoever on how to, you know, sell this or communicate that um just get outside perspective all the time do not be afraid of feedback feedback is great awesome excellent well Roy, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of business of architecture thank you enoch okay bye 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 and that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture to get more resources about how you as an architect can raise your fees land the projects you love to work on, and get the time in your day back. Join the members-only Business of Architecture Insider list for free by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free. Enter your best email address there, and I will send you instant access to free resources, including my book, Social Media for Architects. If you'd like to discuss a thought or insight from today's show, visit businessofarchitecture.com slash podcast on that page, you'll also find my notes from today's show and the action items I took away from our conversation. Until next week, keep rocking and go conquer the world. expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help architects conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, do it anyway. <laughs>